Amen. Thank you, Pastor, my own son. Amen. Are you there? Something is happening to you today. You know, there are people, they see crusade is only in the night. This afternoon, this morning, in the sun, you are going to have your own crusade. Well, uh, in Moscow, and those in Moscow are listening to me now, Russia, and we had a crusade. The people said, this man from Nigeria, we've heard a lot of stories from Nigeria, and we're not going to give him chance to have crusade in the night, because in the night, anything can happen from the back pocket. So they said, money in their parliamentary building we're going to have the crusade they said is that all right i said it's all right and then we gathered there at the parliamentary building crusade in the morning and i talked about jesus is the one i always talk about and this morning we're going to talk about jesus and then we finished the crusade. We finished altar call and everything. And then I said, now we're going to pray. And as I said, we're going to pray. Somebody came and put a woman, paralyzed hands, paralyzed feet, to walk and to move. She had to crawl on all the floor like an animal. And they put her at the gate, at the door by which everybody will go out. And so we said, in Jesus' name, okay, miracle, touch them, heal them, deliver them. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And so we closed the meeting. Many people got healed. They, you know, gave testimonies. And as they were going out, they saw that woman that had been paralyzed 25 years, crawling on all four. As they were passing like this, and she saw them walking, she got up. She stood up and started walking. And the people knew, I didn't touch her, I didn't go near her, I didn't do anything, just the name of Jesus for you. The name of Jesus this morning will solve all your problems. Yeah. And anywhere you are, any part of the world, today is the day of your victory. Yeah. Great victory through the glorious Savior. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you because you brought us. You brought us to victory and to triumph. You brought us to a glorious transformation. We're asking today, touch everyone, save those who need salvation, heal those who need healing, and let your name be glorified even today, this morning, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. You can do better than that. God bless you. You can see that today we're coming to Numbers chapter 21. And I'm reading from verse 4. Numbers chapter 21, reading from verse 4. It says, And they journeyed from the Mount of by the way of the Red Sea, and he compassed the land of Edom, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. The soul of the people, their legs were all right, their hands were all right, their eyesight was all right, but their soul, the inner man, had a problem, they were 
discouraged. Mind what you say when you are discouraged. Mind what you look at when you are discouraged. Mind the things you do when you are discouraged. You can, that discouragement can be there if you say nothing and you don't feed the discouragement. The discouragement will die of starvation. But the people, as they were discouraged, look at verse 5. In verse 5, and the people speak against God. Discouragement blood brought blasphemous speech and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up? out of egypt to die in the wilderness discouragement brought the thought the mind of death unto them and he said for there is no bread neither is there any water and our soul loathed the spices and discredits this light bread. I thought you said there was no bread, and now you are talking about this light bread. Discouragement brings deception, lie. Just begin to tell lies against yourself, against the leaders, against God, because you are discouraged. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, And the Lord said, Fiery serpents among the people. And the serpents had been there all the time. But when they kept their mouth, the Lord kept the serpents away. But when they lost control of their own mouth, of their own lips, of their own tongue, then the serpents were released and they couldn't control the situation anymore. You see, there are many dangers around, there are many problems around. As long as you are in control of your mouth, control of your speech, control of your lifestyle, all the things that are evil will be kept away from you. But when we ignorantly foolishly carelessly prayerlessly when we open our mouth and then we say things we shouldn't be saying against god and against the man of god then the serpents were released fairy serpents among the people and they beat the people and much people of israel died you will not die i will not die before my time you will not die before your time. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us and Moses, no grudges. A minister should not keep grudges, no hatred, no unforgiving spirit, and there is no sin that's good for you. You planted the wind, you're reaping the one wind. No, Moses will not say that. And a true minister, after all, a true minister should be saved. A true minister shall be sanctified with the damnic nature taken out. If the damnic nature is taken out, hatred of the people, your pastor, that hatred is taken away with you. They said this, they did that, and all that. All that is gone. And Moses prayed for the people. And God will answer our prayer for you. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent. No argument, Lord. Hey, I, I never did that before. I thought you used the rod in my hand. I thought I raised the rod up 
like I did in Egypt when all the frogs were there. And as I raised up the rod, everything clear. Don't argue with God. It's a new day. It's a new approach. It's a new method. It's a new miracle. And God, the Lord said unto Moses, take thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone no exception no partiality everyone that is beaching when he looketh upon it shall lay look at verse 9 in verse 9 and moses made a serpent of brass brazen serpent and he put it upon a pole and it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man then he beheld and the serpent the, the, the serpent of brass and he lived you will live beyond that cancer you will live beyond that sickness you will live beyond that poison of the old serpent of the devil you will live in jesus name What's the meaning of that? And what's the significance of that? John chapter 3 verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man, Jesus, be lifted up. We're no more looking at the serpent. Calvary has come. The cross have been put in place and Christ has died for you on the cross so the son of man must be lifted up verse 15 that whosoever believes on him that's what I look now we look now by faith we look at Calvary now by faith that whosoever believes in him should not perish no you will not perish you've come to this service you're looking for life eternal life abundant life supernatural life that's what you'll get before you go home i will not perish i say i will not perish i was saying it for you you will have eternal life we're talking of the believer's great victory through the glorious Savior. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the grievous suffering for their besetting sin. Number two, the great sacrifice of our blessed Savior. Number three, the godly stand of our boundless soundness the godly stand for our boundless soundness look at number one number one is the grievous suffering for their besetting sin if you look at um, psalm 107 reading from verse 17 it says fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities they are afflicted look at that affliction does not just come you're not the only one living on earth suffering does not just come and serpents do not just come biting this and biting that fools because of their transgression the children of israel they became fools they became unwise they became unthinking and whatever occurred to them they don't look before they leap they don't think of the consequences before they act there are many people like that in the world and the lord says if you don't think of the consequence of what is coming and just talk and jump and whatever you become a fool and you break yourself you break your life you destroy your life 
fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquity. Not because this is the will of God. Not because what can I do? God wants me to be beaten by serpent, the old serpent. What can I do? Every human being, if he doesn't have prostate, he'll have a, you know, lung cancer. What can I do if a man, if a woman does not have fibroid, uh, she might have, um, you know, um, ulcer. We, we must have something. No, we don't have to. Enoch did not have any of those things. Samuel did not have any of those things. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not have any of those things. And Daniel did not have any of those things. We don't have to have them. Because fools, because of their transgression, because of their iniquities are afflicted. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, it says, a fruitful land has now become barren, barrenness. And for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. The reason why the fruitful land of the past becomes a barren land today is not because when that happens to every place, that happens to every tribe and every community. No, it's because of the wickedness of the people that dwell there. That's why they suffered grievously. Look at three things here. Number one, we're looking at uh, the corruption and the frequency of their besetting sins. You see those children of Israel, and they acted like babies. They acted like children untouched, untouched, unteachable and you see anytime something happens the only way they knew to, to do is to grumble and to murmur and to complain and to use their mouth in a way they shouldn't use their mouth the corruption and the frequency of their besetting sins number two the consequence and the vitality of their blasphemous speech number three the confession and forsaking of their baffling secrets baffling secrets secrets that will baffle you how can these people that God brought out of Egypt and is taking them to the to the promised land were baffled that people like this that when they were right with God whether it's Og or whether it's Bishan or anyone nobody could conquer them how is it now they're just dying like flies because of the sin, besetting sin, because of their speech, the word of their mouth, blasphemous speech, because of their baffling secrets. Look at number one there, the corruption and the frequency, the corruption and the frequency, frequency, frequency of their besetting sin. We're looking at Numbers chapter 14, and we're looking at verse 2. Numbers chapter 14 verse 2. And all the children of Israel murmured, murmured, murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, would God that we had died always, always, whenever this commitment came up. Whenever the wind was not blowing, cool breeze unto them, and whenever the heat was too much, and whenever there's something contrary to what they expected, the same thing they always did. The same thing they always said, would God were died in the land of Egypt, or would God we are died in this wilderness. I want you to look at verse 22 there. In verse 22, look at this. It says, because all those men that have, which have seen my glory and have 
and they have seen my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and they have tempted me these ten times besetting sin it always comes up and up and up grumbling always murmuring always complaining always wanting to die always these ten times have you look at your life and see your action your reaction your response when you are tired when you are disappointed when you are unhappy when somebody crossed your way is there something you always say like the children of Israel these ten times have they and have they spoken against him they have not heard they have not hearkened unto my voice you know that's the thing to check up in our lives the preacher is there something you always do when you are not happy Something you always say when you are not happy. Something you always tell your congregation when everybody is not towing the line that the besetting sin. Is there something you always do when you see a lady? You say the lady is beautiful. Uh -uh, uh -uh. And the beauty is in your eyes, not on her face. How come? That some people you call beautiful are driven away by their husband. The husband doesn't see the beauty, only sees the ugliness. The beauty is in your eyes. And what do you do? When you look at a lady and you say, this is beautiful. That thing you do, you run after her, you want to grab her, you want to you mess up yourself not messing her you want to mess up yourself because you've seen something you cannot read that thing you always do when you hear this one has money this one has money and now you can buy this you can buy that that thing you always do the covetousness running after what belongs to other people that's your besetting sin when something does not please you and your emotion rises up like a lion inside you. Anger, anger, anger. Every little thing is anger. Every common thing, anger. That's your besetting sin. You see, we get into problem because of the besetting sin, their corruption, and the frequency, frequency, it was coming and coming. It hindered them from getting to the promised land. I pray that besetting sin will bury it here today. Look at number two here. Number two is the consequence and the fatality of their blasphemous speech. Great is the man that knows when to keep quiet and when to talk. Protected is the woman that knows when to hold her tongue and when to release the tongue. And good, profitable is that boy, is that girl, when anywhere you are, are you in the class? Are you on the field? Are you playing with friends? Are you meeting a stranger? Glorious and profitable is that young man, that young lady that knows what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. You see, many people in the world get into trouble by just their tongue. But you know, we have only one tongue, but we have two ears. You listen double, and you speak single, slow. We have two eyes, we have only one tongue. And what you see, you'll see a lot of things, but you don't say anything because of what you see. We have two hands, and our hands can wave, our hands can walk, our hands can handle, but you do more activity 
than you do with the tongue. We have two legs, but only one tongue. And so, you minimize what you say. You don't talk more than even what you see. You don't talk more than what you hear. You don't talk more than you do. You don't talk more than your ability to walk around. There are people, the only aspect and the only member of their body, they use and overuse is their tongue. That's why these children of Israel, they overuse their tongue once again. And as they overuse their tongue, the judgment came upon them. You'll escape a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties in your life when you moderate what you say, you can see anything. What you say, you can hear anything. What you say, you can walk in different places. What you say, you can use your hand various ways. What you say, that's how serpents came almost out of nowhere and started biting the people. Great consequence. Look at number three. Number three, we're looking at the confession and the forsaking of their baffling secrets. He now came and they confessed. That's what we need to do. If we just say, I'll keep quiet, time will heal the hurt. No. Serpents do not mind time. If they just kept quiet, time will stop. The serpents, no. Serpents don't stop. Afflictions don't stop. Sicknesses don't stop because we keep quiet. No. There must be confession and there must be the forsaking of the sin. And the confession is not limited to schoolboys. It's not limited to children. Mama, I stole a piece of meat from the, from the porch. It's not limited uh, to, uh, you know, little girls. My mother, I took a piece, a cube of sugar from that box. Now, confession reaches everyone. Everyone who has misused the tongue, everyone that has gone the evil way, the wrong way. Confession is for everyone. But the confession must not stand alone. The confession must be followed by forsaking the sin. Look at Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. In Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. There is a hand in heaven. There is a power in heaven that moderates prosperity. Spiritual prosperity, material prosperity, family prosperity, and daily prosperity. There is the one that sits on the throne, and he is the one that directs, that controls where prosperity goes. And there is Mr. Big Man. And he says, people like me, if I confess, if I tell God that I was the foundation of that evil speaking, I was the generating search of that noise and that smoke. And Mr. Big Man, Mr. Madam Big Woman, if I confess, uh -uh, you of all people, well, if you want prosperity from heaven for your soul, for your spirit, for your life, for your family, and for every endeavor you have, there's only one way. You've done wrong. You've said something wrong. Come to the Lord and, conf and confess. It says, He that covereth the sins 
shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them. You see, those two words are linked together. Confess and forsake. First confess and say bye bye. No more. And remember, this is a habitual sin. A besetting sin. What they always did. But you say, I confess that besetting sin. I confess that blasphemous speech. I confess that baffling secret. And I forsake them. And I say, no more. The problem, the challenge of many people that come to crusade, they confess, they stand up, they raise up their hands, but they go back to that same dumb thing, that same sinful thing. That's, there's no salvation there. You confess, you forsake, and you say that thing no more. And that confession and the forsaking of the secrets that baffle people. That's ah, ah, Mr. So and so, Madam So and so, Brother So and so, Sister So and so can do that. Yes, it happened. What are we going to do now? Confess and forsake. Mercy will come to you. Mercy will come to you today in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, the great sacrifice of our blessed Savior. We've read that already, that Jesus Christ said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever, whosoever believes in him will not perish. Thank God I come to people today that will not perish. Because if God had said, no way for them. They have done too much. They've gone beyond the day of grace they will perish. The Lord will not send us to come and wake up somebody whom God has said in the sleep of death he cannot wake up. The Lord will not send a servant to people that God said Ephraim is gone after his idols leave him alone. But the Lord is coming to you because the great sacrifice of the blessed Savior is for you. It's for me. It's for me. You know, Calvary is for you. Christ is for you. That crucifixion was just because of you. What he said, it is finished. That is for you. It's for me. Say it. It's for me. You believe that you are set free today. Look at three things here. Number one, looking unto Jesus for total cure. No sickness will remain after we mention the name of Jesus on you today. Then leaning on the justifier for transforming conversion. There's only one kind of conversion. The conversion that transforms life. But the conversion people say, I'm converted. I say, I can't understand you. Were you stealing before? Yes. Are you stealing now? Yes. Show me. Where's the conversion? Were you fighting before? Yes. Are you fighting now? Yes. Where's the conversion? Were you doing evil behind the curtain, behind a closed door before? Pastor, I will not tell like yes. Do you still do evil behind closed doors? Pastor, I'm sorry. Yes. Where is the conversion? Conversion transforms life. The things I used to do 
I do them no more. That's conversion. The places I used to go, I go there no more. That's the conversion. The dresses I used to wear, I wear them no more. That's the conversion. The gang I used to keep, I keep that no more. That's the conversion. There's no conversion if your life is chill, the life of sinfulness. Number two, leaning on the justifier for transforming conversion. Number three is living in the joy of triumphant conquerors. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at looking unto Jesus for total kill. You see, when those people were beaten by those serpents, they came to Moses, they confessed, they forsook their sin, and God said, lift up the brazen serpent, and whosoever looks, because that brazen serpent will live. And we're told in the word of God that all we need to do is to look unto Jesus. This morning, you will look. Abia, yeah. amen. Yeah. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The author and the perfecter of our faith, looking unto Jesus for salvation, he is the Savior, look unto him. For healing, he is the healer, look on him. He is the deliverer, look on him, and today your problems are solved. He is the provider, look unto him, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, it were told, he endured the cross for you, despising the shame on your behalf, and is seated, set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Look at number two. Number two here is leaning on the justifier for transforming conversion you lean on him you don't depend on your own strength i can handle that no you cannot handle that i can change that no you cannot change that i can refashion that no you cannot you lean on the justifier look at uh, the word of god here we're told in Acts chapter 3, reading from verse 19. It, in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be blotted out. If something is written on a slate, and somebody gives you that slate, you can rub off, you can wipe off, you can clean off what's reaching on that slate. But if the thing is reaching in the book of record, what you've done, and that book is in heaven, managed only by the Lord, and nobody, no prophet, no religious man, no religious bell ringing woman can go there and blot out the thing. My brother, no priest. My sister, there, no reverend father can go where all your sins have been reaching and say, I come here to heaven. He has not died. How can he get to heaven? And then, after he died, we don't know where he will go. He cannot go there and wipe out every evil thing you've done. But Jesus, who came to this earth, Jesus, who knows everything, Peter said, Lord, you know all things, you know. 
that I love you. He knows all things. He is the one now at the right hand of the Father. And this morning, he is the one that will blot out all your transgressions. Amen. 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 It says, repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That's why you lean on him. Is the one that comes to justify us. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it says, Unto you, my brother, my sister, unto you first, God have been raised up. His son, Jesus, sent him to bless you. You are blessed. In turning away every one of you, every one of us from his iniquity. He will do it for us even today in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Living in the joy of the triumphant conqueror. It's the one that makes us to conquer. It's the one that makes us to be triumphant. That now we've come to the Lord, we've confessed, we're forsaken, we've come to the Lord, we're repented, and we've relied on Him. Now we're saved. After being saved, after being born again, the next step now is that now we're living. You see the children of Israel, when they looked on the brazen serpent, those children of Israel did not stay there. They now kept on walking. They kept on living until they got to the promised land. And now that we're saved, now that we're born again, now that a new heart, a new life, and a new personality has now been given unto us. We now live and live and live in the joy of the triumphant conquerors because it's the one that makes us to conquer. It tells us in Romans chapter 5. Reading here from verse 1. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. It says being justified by faith. Being justified by faith. We have peace with God. And it says it's through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we can rest in him. Now we can lean on him. Now we can depend on him. Look at verse 2 there. Verse 2 tells us, it says, in verse 2, it says, by whom also we have access by faith. The justification brings us right into the presence of the Lord. And it says, we have access unto the Father. We have access unto the, unto the one that protects us and preserves us. And he protects the salvation he has given unto us. And he says this by faith that the leaning on him, that the living for him. And we live and live for Jesus day after day. I will lean on Jesus day after day. I'll keep on looking unto Jesus day after day. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That is what he does for us. And he does that all by the faith we have in him. Look at verse 17 there. In verse 17, Romans chapter 5. Reading from verse 17. It says, For if 
by one man's offense. Adam, the first man. By one man's offense, it says death rage by one. Much more, they that receive the abundance of grace. They that receive the abundance of grace at conversion. They that receive the abundance of grace when you look up to the Lord for your salvation. When you looked up to the Lord for your justification. When you looked upon the Lord for your redemption. And now we have that grace by that abundance of grace. And of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. You were in. I said you were in. The six that had dominion over you before, now you will have dominion over them. The six that used to put your back to the wall and you didn't know what you will do. You didn't know. Well, you know, anytime that temptation comes, anytime that trial comes, anytime that challenge came, one, you're already on the ground. But now you reign over them. Sin will not reign over you. The human weakness will not reign over you. And all those besetting sins and all those bad habits that used to be in your life, they will not reign over you anymore in Jesus' name. It says they that have received abundance of grace, grace for salvation. Abundance of grace, grace for for sanctification, abundance of grace, grace for steadfastness. Those who have received that abundance of grace and they do not stop at salvation, they move on unto sanctification and they move on unto steadfastness. All those people that receive that abundance of grace, they reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. Another amen. amen. Romans chapter 8, I'm looking at verse 2. In Romans chapter 8, looking at verse 2, it tells us here, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. That's Paul the apostle talking the Roman believers, he didn't say, has made you free. If you are a preacher, you must taste of the freedom you are talking about. If you are a minister, like Paul, you must taste of the freedom you are talking about. Are we saying that the congregation should be free from besetting sin? So, so the preacher. So also the pastor, so also the evangelist, so also the worker. It says the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Are we saying that the spirit of life in the member will make them free from anger? Yes, well... If the minister is telling the members that the spirit of life in Christ will make you free from anger, the preacher, the minister, the evangelist himself must be free from that anger. Are we saying that the spirit of life in Christ Jesus will make the members of the church free? From fornication and adultery. That's exactly what we're preaching. Then that same spirit of life in Christ Jesus must make the preacher, the pastor, the minister, the one who stands on the pulpit declaring the freedom we have from the cross. He too, preacher, proclaimer, 
must be free from all the things that held you back before. Adultery included and fornication included. Look at that verse 2 again. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free, has made us free, has made the minister, the member free, has made everyone, everyone that calls on the name of the Lord has made me free from the law of sin and death. He will do it. In your life, he will do it. In our lives as a church, as a fellowship, he will do it in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8, look at verse 11 there. In verse 11, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in your dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. The spirit of God comes within our body and every dead tissue there, every dead nap there, every dead patch there, the spirit of life will quicken every part of your body in Jesus' name. And then there's a cancer your own cells and the body they're dying and dying and dying and these cancer cells they're growing and growing that's why you have that swelling that's why you have that pain and the spirit of christ that raised him from the dead it will come to your body right there at this moment all those cancer cells will die off in jesus name and then your bodily cells everything will come alive you will live i said you will live the power of the Lord will so work mightily on you that the spirit that was mighty enough, powerful enough to raise him, Christ, from the dead. No matter your bed reading, no matter you have difficulties, no matter you have challenges, that spirit of the Lord today, I say today, we're quicken your mortal body so that everything that needs to be done will be done in your life, yeah. in my life. Yeah. Look at verse 37, Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. More than conquerors. Where is she there? More than conquerors, where is she there? The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Now we come to point number three. We're looking at the godly stand for our boundless soundness. The godly stand. Now, when we're saved, we have a stand. There must be something you're standing for. You know, if, if there are people that stand for nothing, they don't have any conviction they're standing for. They don't have any consecration they're standing for. They don't have any commitment they're standing for. If you are not standing for anything, you will fall for everything. What makes us stand? What makes us steadfast? Why do we say, here I stand? After conversion, with consecration, with commitment, here I stand. It's because we have 
the Lord that will not compromise living on the inside of us. And if you're a believer, if you're a child of God, and you have Christ, the one that will never, never, never compromise, you'll be able to stand. That's why we're looking at the godly stand for our boundless soundness. And three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the fortitude. Fortitude means courage. Fortitude means inner power. The fortitude to destroy all the brazen sacrilege. It is a kind of life that people live. The sacrilege. And it's a brazen sacrilege. Uh, you've heard the language when you say that man has a brazen effrontery. He's so, he's so proud in his evil and he's brazen. Brazen. He will not bow or bend for anyone. And there's a sacrilege. Sacrilege is what people do in the supposed service to God and yet they are they are committing sacrilege that the fortitude to destroy the brazen sacrilege. There is the faithfulness that delivers from all the things that confront the saints of God. That is the faithfulness that delivers bold saints a saint must be bold that's a bold devil a saint must be bold if you are going to conquer they are bold sinners those sinners are bold and brazen and if you are going to still do what you intended to do what you are called to do what you are raised up to do you must be bold as bold as the bold sinners. In fact, you need to be bolder, more bold than who they are. And it takes faithfulness, the faithfulness that delivers bold saints. Number three is the faith that decrees boundless soundness look at number one here number one we're looking at the fortitude that destroys the brazen sacrilege we're coming to first second kings chapter 18 and i'm reading here from verse one look at this maybe you never thought of this before we're told in second kings chapter 18 looking at verse 1 now it came to pass in the third year of Ushia, son of Eli, king of israel that is a kind the son of ahaz not ahab ahaz king of judah began to reign and when a child of god reigns you see the effect and you see the mark and you see what it means for a real child of god to be in charge to be in control and to reign it says in verse 2 look at verse 2 it says Twenty and five years old was he, Ezekiah, when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abba, almost like Abia. Good name, Abia. Good name, Abia. Yeah. But this one, Abba. It says the daughter of Zechariah. All good names there. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it says, 
And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. Look at verse 4, a very important verse 4. In verse 4, we're told he removed the high places and break the images and cut down the grooves and break in pieces the brazen serpent which Moses had made for unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it and he called each Nehush time. You know what happened? After God directed Moses to lift up the brazen serpent, and he did according to the word of the Lord. And everyone at that time that looked on the brazen serpent, when they looked, they lived. The children of Israel lost their faith in God. And it took the brazen serpent with them. They crossed over Jordan. They took the brazen serpent. They fought the Canaanites. They took the brazen serpent. They settled in the land of Canaan. They took the brazen serpent over until the first king, David, reigned. Solomon reigned. All the others reigned. It came now to the time of Ezekiah. And they still had the brazen serpent. And they were sacrificing incense unto that brazen serpent. Became idolatry. And the people that do that today, many years ago, God used this in their denomination. Now, the founder is gone. All those miracles, they are not happening anymore. But they still take their brazen serpent. And they still take all those. And they will not allow anyone to touch that thing. But Ezekiah saw that this is brazen sacrilege. It's been handed over, handed over by other people that had reigned. And he broke it up. Look around you. And there's some um, brazen serpents, sacrilege, idol. The people are not calling idol because many years ago in the wilderness, all those things were raised up. And they're still continuing with them. I pray the Lord will give every overseer, every pastor, Every group pastor, if you find something that, you know, some people have handed over in their besetting sin, they have handed over in their incorrigibility, in their state of being unteachable, they hand over and hand over, and nobody could challenge anything like that, but Ezekiah come. And you come at a time like this, everything that should not be in the household of faith, wanting to replace Christ, we're going to break them down. In your own family, break them down. In your personal life, break them down. In the local church, break them down. Anything that's you know, we say, if we're saved, this should not be there. And the people who say they are saved, they carry on, they carry on, they carry on. Somebody must rise up and break that thing and destroy that thing. In the church of the living God, we say, if you're ministering, you minister only unto the Lord. If self has now climbed to the throne of the heart and instead of worshiping Christ worshiping the Savior worshiping the Lord we now have to bow and bend to self that if you don't 
then you understand the abrasive sacrilege cell will take it on you. We have to break down that thing and it will be broken down. Yeah. Overseers, with me here, I say anything of cell, anywhere, anywhere, if it's in the choir, it's in the workers, if it's among the people that feel they are here, they are here. Without them, we cannot worship God. Overseers, are you around? I said, Overseers, are you around? Let the people hear you that you are around. You and I will break down every sacred, sacrilege among our people in Jesus' name. Thank you, sit down. We're not going to allow anyone to take that brazen sacrilege out of the wilderness and bring it into the tabernacle of worship. It will be broken down. And if the people who are bringing that brazen sacrilege, if they think they are indispensable, we starting from me and our leaders will show you that nobody is indispensable if you come to pollute the service of the lord will show you that nobody is indispensable in the household of faith give me a good amen, amen. we're coming to number two now number two we're looking at the faithfulness that delivers bold saints. Now, Daniel, when he was threatened, if you pray again, when we say no prayer, look at the lion's den, you'll go there. You have to be bold, and you have to stand, and you have to say, here is my commitment before the Lord. And let all the lion's dens in the community be open. You go out, no lion will kill you. Yeah. But you have to be bold to stand for the truth. And if Nebuchadnezzar will say, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, have you heard the announcement I made that when you hear the sound of the carnage and the sound of the flute, everybody bows down to worship my idol. Now, look to your right, everybody is bowing down. Look to your left, everybody is bowing down. Look everywhere, everybody is bowing down. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If you refuse to bow down, who can deliver you out of my hand? You have to be a bold saint to say, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, will deliver us. Our God, whom we serve, will deliver us. And he will deliver us out of your hand. And Nebuchadnezzar was angry, furious. There are some so-called believers. They cannot stand the fury and the anger of a sinner, especially the chief sinner in that place. But they stood, I will stand. I will stand. And because of that, Nebuchadnezzar commanded the heaviest people, the mightiest people, the strongest people in his kingdom. And they bounced them and they threw them into the burning furry furnace. Did they die? Bold saints living by faith will don't die like flies. The people that took them up, they were the people. They were the people that died. But those who remain bold in the Lord, and they will not bulge, and they will not change, and they will not compromise. They were walking in the fire. You will walk in your fire. 
and the panizza rose up and he peeped into the furnace and said, What? Counselor, come, come. How many people do you throw in? They said, Three people. He said, Lo, I see four people standing and walking. Here is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the fourth one is like unto the Son of God. Bold sage, he will not forsake you. He will not leave you. He will stay with you till the very end in Jesus' name. Nothing will shake your heart. Nothing will move your mind. Nothing will bring fear in your life. You will be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. The faith that decrees boundless soundness. The faith, the faith that says in my life, Satan will not have the final say. I didn't hear your amen. Yeah. In my life, evil spirits will not have the final say. In my life, idol worshippers will not have the final say. In my life, brutal, cruel sinners will not have the final say. And it's the faith that makes you to decree and say, this is where my life will go. And your life will go in that direction in Jesus' name. Look at Job chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 28. Job chapter 22. Reading from verse 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. Amen. Amen. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. This morning, we've heard the word of God. We look on him. We lean on him. We live for him. We go into the promised land. And there's no giant, there's no personality that can stand before us in Jesus' name. We're going with confidence. We're going with the kill. We're going with the conversion. We're going as conquerors. Anything that stands in our way, as we get there, they will fall before us. All the walls of Jericho and all the walls of demarcation, as we shout the praise of God, they will fall before us. And then, whatever happens anytime, whether the preacher is there or not, you are there, and Christ lives on the inside of you, you will decree what you want, and it shall be done unto you. And every day and every week, living one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time, you'll conquer and conquer and continue to conquer in Jesus' name. And even this morning, whatsoever you open your mouth and you decree will be done. Are you ready? Let's rise up now and tell the Lord that the devil will not have the final say in your life. That the sinners will not have the final say in your life. And that whatever the devil is trying to bring out of the pocket will not have the final say in your life. Thou shalt decree a thing. And it shall be fulfilled for you. Open your mouth. Any besetting sin there? 
confess and forsake. Tell the Lord. A thing that always happens, that temptation that always comes, and you yield frequently, 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 and it has now become besetting sin, corruption, so frequently happening. Tell the Lord, confess, forsake. Blasphemous speech, speaking against God, speaking against the men, our fathers in the Lord, against the women, mothers in Israel, and mothers in the Lord, against their family, gossiping, complaining, murmuring, I become, has become besetting sin. And anyone that wants to hear bad news will come to you. Any story today, tell the Lord, I confess, I forsake. Bad speech, bad talk. You'll be judged by the words of your mouth. The really speech that derails others from the path they ought to follow. Repent of them, confess, and forsake. Have faith in God that what you confess, he cleanses. Have faith in God. Yet what you confess, he gives you the power to overcome. That's what conversion means. Transforming conversion. If you say you are born again, your life must be different today than the past. Christ was raised up as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross that you so ever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher perfecter maturer completer of our faith, look unto him. There's no habit he cannot change. There's no lifestyle he cannot change. There's no corruption he cannot cleanse off from your life. Look unto Jesus. Lean upon Jesus. Lord, on your grace I depend. Lord, on your strength I depend. Lord, on your sacrifice at Calvary I depend. Trust him. Look unto Jesus. Lean on him, the justifier. Live for him in the joy of the conqueror. Live for him.
Live for him. Don't live for self. Live for him. Don't live for manipulators that want to manipulate your life, your experience, your Christian devotion. They want to manipulate. Don't lean on them and don't live for them. They will not defend you in eternity when you are challenged. Why did you live like that? Live in the joy of the Lord. Have a godly stand and be steadfast. You're not being blown here and there by the wind. Preacher, stand. Maintain the standard. Keep the faith. Uphold the doctrines of the Bible. And don't let your subordinates, the people, under your leadership, control whether you preach restitution or not, whether you preach holiness or not, whether you preach <clears throat> the word of the Lord on marriage or not. Don't let any of your subordinates your subjects, your students, control what you say and what you don't say. Stand. Stand. Keep the standard. Be steadfast. Any breezing serpent, breezing sacrilege, they brought. From the wilderness, break it down. Destroy it. And deliver the people of God from worshipping the wilderness idol. Be an Ezekiah. That will take the brazen serpents. That the children of Israel are burning incense to. And the bullies in the land will bully on you if you dare touch that thing. David didn't touch it. Solomon didn't touch it. And Jehoshaphat didn't touch it. And you are coming to touch it. If you want to bully you down, stand. Be steadfast and take that thing coming from cell. Take it away from the household of faith. Be faithful. A man's faithfulness. For you to deliver the people of God and make them bold. Make them bold. Let there be some Daniels in your congregation. Bold Daniel. What are you preaching? If you don't have some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in your congregation, what are you preaching? Raise new brand bold Daniels, Shadrachs, Meshachs, and Abednego. Don't allow anyone to bully you down to say here i stand stand be bold servant yourself before you can raise up bold saints and the power of prayer that decrees a thing soundness boundless soundness among the people of God. That's why God has raised you up. 
you are doing anything less than that, you are not fulfilling your calling. Come back and stand, stand firm, and stand steadfast in the center of the will of God. Don't vacillate, don't shake, don't fret, don't fade, don't tremble. Stand. Members of the church, your office, stand. Your community stand. Your village stand. Let them know there is a converted man here. There is a consecrated woman here. There is a committed child here. And I stand for the Lord. Stand. He says, My grace is sufficient for you and the Lord will see you through in Jesus name we pray Amen. father we thank you you provided for everything we need from the point of being a sinner to being a saint to being the servant of God and to be the cherished ones that will go up in the rapture everything is now available Lord I pray abundant grace given to everyone in Jesus name Amen. salvation great salvation transforming salvation Give to everyone that repents and everyone that forsake their sin, depending and trusting and having faith in Christ, in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, the grace to stand and to withstand in the evil day. The grace never to bend or yield to any temptation and any tempter and in any temptress. Give us the grace in Jesus' name. Amen. The boldness that believers of old, the boldness that believers at the beginning of deeper Christian life ministry, the boldness that stood and we stood and we said no to everyone calling us to compromise that same boldness give to everyone in your church today in Jesus name raise up Lord in every congregation in every fellowship in every assembly in every church in the local government every church in the region every church in the state raise up brand new bold daniels in jesus name yeah. this is the time of the culture the tradition the religions around and even the so-called believers false believers it is the time they take the place of Nebuchadnezzar and are challenging everyone to bow, to bend. They don't want us to keep on bowing to Christ. They now place themselves at the Antichrist and they sit in the temple of God, challenging us, we you bow to them. Lord, make Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, rise up in every congregation. Men that will stand. Women that will stand. Young people that will stand. That Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we will not bow to any threat, any fury, any anger yeah. of any Nebuchadnezzar in Jesus' name. Yeah. We will conquer every Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. 
we will walk over him and walk to heaven. Yeah. And Lord, put the word of authority and the word of power in every mouth yeah. that we will not live by what Satan conjures, we live by what every child of God will command and decree in Jesus' name. Yeah. The word of authority, the word of decree, in the mouth of our overseers, in the mouth of our national, state, region overseers, in the mouth of our pastors, district pastors, group pastors, in the mouth of our workers, that once again will rise up in faith and will live by faith and we cancel everything Satan has declared. We cancel it by the decree of the believer. Yeah. We're marching on. Yeah. We're marching up. Yeah. We're going forward. Yeah. Nothing will stop our move in Jesus' name. Yeah. We will not die in the wilderness. Yeah. We will get to the promised land. What is she there? What is she there? Why don't you raise up your hand? Father, hold that hand. They will not perish in the wilderness. Victoriously, militantly, triumphantly, will march through every wilderness, will come to paradise at last. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name we pray.